Hey everyone, welcome back. We're gonna grab a quick recap on the Ghoul Saw stance changes that DE dropped today. While it does not fix a fundamental problem present on the weapon archetype itself, it does address some issues. Somewhat. I don't feel it even does this pretty well, but let's just jump right in and see what has changed. So on the left are the old combos on the Butcher's Revelry stance, and the right is the buffed version. The first thing to notice is that the forward E Ghoul Rush, the one where you walk forwards while menacingly spooling the Ghoul Saw, remains untouched. For some reason, DE left this particular combo alone. I don't know. Is it really that much of an issue? It restricts movement speed and forces you to walk. Granted, you can turn, but this really isn't that good of a stance combo because your character is static, meaning the hitbox is static as a cone in front of the camera. If you want to hit things on your side, below, or above you, you won't be able to hit anything else. After the round of buffs, Ghoul Rush is now the lowest damage per second combo. It already had an issue of low multipliers and no procs and no force slash, and now after receiving zero buffs, well... I don't know what to say, basically, you will never ever use this combo anymore for any reason. Next, I want to take a look at our normal E, the Rictus Wraith combo that I featured in my original video. They have added a guaranteed slash on the second hit and increased multiplier for the final two hits. This weapon sucks as a low combo or heavy attack melee and will only ever be used as a light attack 12x setup in my eyes at least. Remember how I said at 145.8% status chance from weeping wounds you will hit nearly one slash proc per swing? So imagine every single one of these has a little slash symbol already beside it and the ones you see here, change them to a 2x slash proc instead. Now, the new 4 slash doesn't look so useful anymore, does it? Especially because it's on the second hit, which is only 100% damage scaling. We've gained a significant damage bonus on the third and fourth hit. There is a possible error here, as the wiki says the fourth hit used to do 200%, but the forum update post says it used to do a 3 times multiplier, or 300%. Whatever it is, the current iteration is 400% post buffs for the entire combo. This represents an increase from 800 or 900% scaling to 1100. This is much more substantial than the fourth slash they added on the second hit, as increasing hit multipliers is global and affects all builds equally, whereas adding 4 slash procs depends on the weapon IPS and status chance. Overall, it's a decent damage buff. Nothing big, but I don't feel it will make a massive damage increase. Just enough to give the hits a bit more weight. However, what I would like to see is, because this is an assault saw of all weapons, every hit should have staggered. This is the one archetype where it really doesn't make sense I can just hit an enemy and they don't flinch. This would help a lot with the feel of the weapon. Finally, what the heck is this combo? 5 seconds long. Just cut back on the awkward pauses between swings. It's a heavy weapon, but the Warframes are powered by supernatural infestation strength actuation. There's no reason why they have such a big delay after a swing instead of looping it into another move better. Who even uses saw swings like this anyways? At the very least, reduce the combo animation to 4 seconds or something. Rip and Ride is still a meme. They increase the hit multipliers of the second and third hits. I don't even know what parts of this constitutes as hits, but it doesn't have 4 slash. It doesn't have good multipliers, and it takes 3.8 seconds to execute. The damage is backloaded, and even after buffs, the scaling is barely better than the forward E, which we already knew was bad. This remains a utility tool, the buff did not help it in a meaningful way. While it's fun to zip around on this, once again I feel the distance traveled should scale with combo, and the slam should only execute if you input another E during the ride, otherwise it should just drop you off at the end. Also, why can't K drives be like this, hello? Look at this camera control, and you don't bounce off walls whenever you touch them. Marilina, take notes please? Reciprocator, the blocky combo, probably got the biggest round of buffs. Now, don't get me wrong, they aren't massive buffs either, but I feel like these are the most impactful. I did not showcase this move in my original video since it was already known to be the best, and I didn't want to leverage the damage showcase off a full spin attack, but this time we're looking at the buff changes, so obviously it's important. So we've gained only an extra 300% damage on the combo, but this is the important part, 100% of the added damage is on forced slash hits, and another 200% hit during the second attack was also converted into force slash. So what exactly was the net gain here? Well, we've gained 300% more base damage and 300% forced slash damage. The force slash is not represented in the average damage percent per second. 
Contrast this to their normal e combo I reviewed first, which gained a net total of just 200% damage and 100% force slash extra. Safe to say, DE really wants us to use the block e combo. Unfortunately, this particular combo locks you in place and you can't move. This would be restricted to grouping strats exclusively and is literally unusable otherwise. While I previously showed my Ghoulsaw video with the Rictus Wraith standing E, you can still use that just like last time but would also work for moving around, unlike the Reciprocator's block E combo. Honestly, I would prefer if the Reciprocator preserved momentum movement when you went into the move. This way, you could twirl your way through the crowd if you set it up properly. A bit of movement tech goes a long way, and if anything, improves interactivity with the stance. It doesn't really help that this is by far the highest DPS combo on the stance itself, leaving you with few options. There does seem to be some inconsistencies with this line in the patch, and this hit multiply reported on the wiki because that's the first hit of the second attack, and not the fourth hit in the first attack. That said, the fourth hit in the first attack was never 100% scaling to start with. Most wiki values are taken from either empirical testing, digging through data, or very rarely copy-pasted from DE explanation. That said, I will side with the wiki this time since stance numbers are never officially released by DE and thus require testing before adding to the wiki. Basically, if you want giant fat DPS, Reciprocator is still the way to go and buy a lot now, but you won't be able to move around like before. The DPS increase is quite noticeable, and I would hazard to say it's closer to a 1.5 times buff, whereas the neutral Erictus Wraith buff is only around a 1.3 to 1.4 times multiplier. For locking you in place, I feel Reciprocator still needs a slight damage buff if that is its intended purpose. Rictus Wraith should swing faster and in my opinion needs a higher average damage multiplier. About 280 or 290 percent I think would be the sweet spot which you could easily achieve by just cutting down the animation to 4 seconds. The swings need reduced pauses too for a better feel. Ghoul Rush is completely useless at the moment. For the hitbox limitations it has, it should have at least doubled average damage multiplier and also 4 slash on every other hit, in my opinion. You're only going to hit 3 to 4 enemies with it at once, even on a max range build, which none of the other combos suffer from. This should be the specialized attack to make sure single enemies die quickly. Therefore, you have an option between wide sweeping arcs to benefit from the 1.0 follow through, or narrowing it in on single enemies with extra 4 slash to compensate for the reduced base damage and crit stats. This would make it a competitive single target dealer as an option if you can close the range without being out of this world overpowered. Rip and Tide is a meme? Forget about it. The only thing it's useful for is if DE adds combo to scale for riding. But do remember, we have a lot of mobility freedom on it. Some people don't know you can use the camera to very easily control it, and this is actually how Think K Drives and Marilina should handle. The feedback is a lot better than them. Finally, add 4 staggers to all attacks. You're swinging an actively spinning saw, for god's sake. As a final touch, it would be much appreciated if the weapon's crit chance was buffed to 16%, which allows it to reach 100% crit chance with Blood Rush and one Gladiator mod, or 19% for 100% with just Blood Rush. I don't think this is too much to ask, but would go a long way to improve the weapon's consistency and performance. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering the Tempest Story and the Sisters of Parvos updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you info first once new war info drops. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.